Hi, I'm Mindy Kaling. And I'm Tracy Wigfield. And we're in studio with The Hollywood Reporter. Very exciting, Four Weddings and a Funeral. The first thing I wanted to ask you is, what's your most romantic comedy moment in real life? <laughs> In real life, romantic you comedy have a real moment life, in romantic real life. Comedy. I these days I'm having more of those like, you know, new parent baby comedy moments. Yeah, and same. Romantic comedy moment where it's like I'm you answering the door. I met my husband on Mindy's show. Uh, right. we were so, both, so that was kind of romantic. I wish you had been foes I, at the beginning. That I fell know. In love with you were <laughs> friends to start. <laughs> no, unfortunately, he never was like trying to stick it to me or something. And, then you and fell I bested love. him in in the office, and then. In the bedroom, that didn't happen. I went to I went to a, I was at a wedding once um, that a hurricane hit. That felt like it was um, oh, in, wow. like from a Ooh. movie. It was like it was in Texas and uh, it like, destroyed the whole thing. We all got alerts on our phone that was like a hurricane's coming, and then it did, and it like hit the, the whole tent got knocked over, and we had to all hide in the catering house. <laughs> felt like something romantic to happen, but it was like scary. <laughs> so it's kind of romantic comedy slash horror. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's horror. right. You know, There's so many great meet cutes in four weddings. Yes. What was your meet cute? Oh, we have a good one. We do have a good meet cute. We have a couple mm -hmm. things. One is so we were working on the Mindy Project season one, and then Thirty Rock was ending when our the fall that we were starting, and we kept hearing about writers uh, over there that might have been good to hire when Thirty Rock ended. And one name that came up was this girl Tracy Wigfield, and I was like, she's so funny, and you know, uh, she got married really young and has a kid, and she's so she's married and has a kid, and the kid's like ten years old, and we're like, what an interesting story! <laughs> what a point, Christian woman! What a Christian yeah. woman! And, and what a what a true love story! And then and Jack Burnett, your your yeah. friend, and and so um, and then she came to work on the show, and for a while. We didn't know that that was your deal until someone was like, "How old is your son?" And I was like, like, "No son, single no woman." Single woman. <laughs> yeah. Why did that rumor get started? I don't. We never got to the bottom, bottom of it. it. I don't know. So specific. Also, uh, I don't know if you remember, but the first day of work, I was like, I, I was, I had never met Mindy, but I was like a big fan of hers and wanted to make a good impression, obviously. And like, I got through the whole day, and I was like, oh, I, yes. and I was like, this went like really well. I feel like I like contributed a lot, and she like thinks I'm cool. And then at the end of the day, I was like peeing in the bathroom stall and you just like opened the door and saw me like was bottomless. Was it that? Was it that then? I thought you walked in on me. I thought you, you walked in. I'm so sorry. I thought you walked, walked in, in on Because remember the door didn't lock? Yes, yeah. And okay. you just walked in on me. I was like, oh no. I ruined it all. No, but it She's made it. She's seen my it, pubes. It, it had the opposite <laughs> effect. It drew us closer. It drew us closer to Me together. seeing her It was pubes. a good meet cute. That's yeah. a wonderful yeah. meet I was like, great pubes. Great pubes. <laughs> Still to this day. Let's talk a little bit about the cast of Four Weddings, because the original movie, it's an amazing movie, mm -hmm, but it's right. very British, pasty white. Yes. And so what did you hope to accomplish with your super diverse cast? You know, when someone says, do you want to adapt Four Weddings and a Funeral, there's a lot of excitement about it. MGM really wanted us to do something with the property, but it was this thing of, I don't know, I did it with The Office, where we, we tried to replicate something that was perfect and everyone got really mad for the first six <laughs> episodes right. and I thought well it would have to be you know more time had gone by since four weddings had started and it was like we decided we're not going to have anyone who's going to be Hugh Grant we're not going to try to find a mm. guy who is like a floppy haired white incredibly Bumbling, compelling kind no of. one could do that like and mm. to be honest that was very of its time and Hugh Grant is Hugh Grant because of it so we thought what were like the new icons what are the kind of things that we would love to see you know I'm Indian Tracy you're like in an interracial marriage. Yes. I said relationship, but it's a full marriage. No, we're married. You're married. Stop saying that. <laughs> but are the people we surround ourselves with um, don't necessarily look like what's reflected in a lot of TV shows mm -hmm. and our friendships. So we wanted to do something. We wanted the cast to, we definitely wanted an African-American woman to be the star. Mm -hmm. And we wanted a British Pakistani man to be the male lead. Mm -hmm. And that felt different and yeah. worth doing. Yeah. Yeah. And Natalie Emanuel, yes. she's amazing. Yeah. Um, coming off of Game of Thrones, she was very vocal about the lack of diversity with Game of Thrones and how that affected how her, her character, when her character yeah. died, the audience was really affected by yeah. it. Right. So can you guarantee that she's not the funeral? <laughs> I know. <laughs> Gets her head cut off. We wouldn't. It was the same. We didn't know that was how we, she was We beheaded die. Natalie Emanuel. We Manuel killed her on the show in the same, same way. way. 
We don't. We wanted to traumatize the world all over again. <laughs> no, we can say I, that she does she, not. She die. does not die. She does, she not, does die. not die. But um, having her, you know, because we we were obviously started shooting this nine months before she, or she had her big climactic scene on Game of Thrones. But the amount of people that love her yeah. and feel. I mean, I don't know how you could relate to a character in Game of Thrones, <laughs> but just, like, loved her and felt seen by her because she was one of the most prominent people of color on the show was uh, was really moving to us, and we're really excited that the fans there can see her do something completely different. Yeah, I'm excited for people to see her doing comedy, too, and it's, yeah. it's such a different thing for her, but she... One of, uh, one of my favorite things about it is she's just so winning. Like, she naturally... Uh, is so likable that you you know that you're just like oh I root for her even though she is her character is constantly making mistakes and sleeping with another woman's husband and doing things <laughs> that you know she shouldn't be doing mm -hmm. you kind of don't care because she uh, you just you know you're always in her side yeah you're invested in her yeah yeah and that that's a good segue to my question that a lot of people define their relationships for better or for worse be from the first romantic comedies they saw. Huh. So, you know, for a lot of the young audience, uh, you're on Hulu, it's a streamer, there's going to be a young audience mm -hmm. watching the show. What do you hope that they take away from the show? That's such a nice question. Their first romantic comedy. I think there's, it, there's so much stuff in this that I would have loved to have seen when I was growing up, so it's nice that you bring that up, and I think I hadn't thought about it in that terms, but it would be great for people to see, um, first of all, London this way and neighborhoods mm. in London that you don't get to see you know Notting Hill is beautiful and we see a lot of that but Hounslow which is a really diverse not wealthy neighborhood um, that we spend a lot of time in the show in and just for people to say like oh wow like look someone like me is finding love with someone who's great looking and funny and it's you don't have to because you know I spend my childhood watching while you were sleeping and you've got mail and you know all these movies and just being like yeah yeah no one looks like me in this but I'm just gonna project yeah. myself on it because I love it so much mm -hmm. and to make it so that people don't have to do that as much is is great yeah it turns out there's good-looking people in every color you prove me <laughs> wrong yes I've <laughs> always said that I've always said but like it's no small thing I mean when we when we watched Crazy Rich Asians what was yeah. one of the profound things it did was show the, the like the female gaze onto Asian men like, mm. they were so gorgeous. And it's, like, great that Brandon and Nikesh get to be these, like, yeah. people. They're so They're so winning and, and yeah. handsome. And they play, like, best friends in the, in the yeah. movie. And, and those relationships exist. We just don't see them. Yeah, they have amazing chemistry. As well. I know. I Aren't they, they great? Too. Those scenes at yeah. the bank, they're so good. Really good together. You made a conscious decision to keep stay true to the original Four Weddings and shoot in London. Was that um, helpful? Do you find rom London to be particularly romantic, or was it Oh my God, challenging. Yeah. So romantic. I mean, you moved there for so long. Yeah, we were there for like three months, and, each, and Mindy was there too for, like we each took a chunk, um, the EPs, and it's such a beautiful, it's such an old city with like mm -hmm. such history, and there's so many iconic places there. It's, it, it's just like really... Especially compared to like <laughs> LA, where everything's from like 14 years ago, it's just like such a like um, iconic, romantic city naturally. And it was great that we got that production value that we could shoot, you know, in Trafalgar Square and you know in <laughs> in like manor houses and have a you know have a wedding um, in in just these like beautiful. <laughs> One of our weddings is in um, <laughs> the house where from the favorite where like Queen Elizabeth oh, the wow. first grew up. It's like crazy. Yeah. Like we get to just see all these places and a lot of them in different ways than you've seen them in other mm -hmm. TV shows and movies. And London is racially, you know, one of the reasons it's great to live in LA and to shoot things in New York is like they're really diverse and that's interesting to me. And London is the same way and it's just different racial populations and they were yeah. ones that I was excited to tell stories about. They have the same issues of illegal immigration and racism towards um Immigrants, we do that. We yeah. talk about that a lot. And especially what's going on right now with Brexit and, and this sort of, you know, it's just an interesting time to tell a story about London. Mm -hmm. Another thing uh, that I noticed was you had a play within a play, mm -hmm. which is the reality show mm -hmm. that's in, right. in the plot. Um, it's kind of great because it really kind of brings this version to today mm -hmm. and how people's lives are, especially among with romance, uh, reality shows are another way that people 
look at their own relationships. Right. Uh, so what, you know, how did you come up, th- how did it come about that you wanted to create this reality <laughs> You love show? reality I TV. love reality shows. You I, love reality I've TV. I've written on and, multiple television and shows. Always, like, episodes about reality television. There's one time when Tracy Wickle will be like, you know what I have an idea about? How about if we do My a life experience. Of, of Real Housewives? <laughs> so I'm just, it's I just a ticking clock. I don't go a lot of places. Clock. Yeah, and uh, you know, I had never heard of Love Island. Uh, they, the yeah. other British writers in the room had told me about it and then we would watch clips of it and stuff and it was like, okay, well, I've never seen this parody and this specific kind of, you know, because you've seen trashy American girls on reality shows, but I've, yeah. ne- I've never seen a parody of that kind of girl, that sort of northern British girl. Uh, and, uh, you know, the actress um, who Sophia. plays Sophia, who plays Zara, just had such a specific funny take on and she has such sweetness to her that... Um, you know, it just felt like a great mind for comedy. Do we really have to go to this party? Your friends don't even like me. What are you talking about? My friends love you. No, they don't. They think I'm trashy and that my boobs are fake, which they are, but your friends don't know that. It was fun shooting that stuff, but just, it's a, it's kind of fun for us to flex where we get to be like, okay, now we get to edit and show this Love Island parody. The credits were so funny. They were so funny with like the it, horrible stock shots of, yes, like, of rose like people petals. Yes, rose and petals and stuff. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, that's what's nice about an hour long as we get to have these ideas and let them breathe. And luckily, Love Island is such a phenomenon that people, people know what we're parodying it. now. Yeah. It's amazing that dichotomy between extremely proper and very trashy. Oh, yes, the, yeah. <laughs> London is, I thought, it, I know Chris Schleicher, one of our writers, was saying, like, you always thought London was, like, the queen and, like, really fancy. And he's like, London's, like, trash, too. Like, you <laughs> watch television, there's just shows where, like, guys' penises are out at, like, 8 o'clock on, like, network <laughs> television. Yes. Like, it's disgusting, also. Um, and we wanted to show that in our show. Do you each have a favorite quote from a romance? Romantic comedy you want to leave oh us God. with. Yes, my favorite quote from a romantic comedy is from Bridget Jones' Diary, when Darcy, played by Colin Firth, says to Bridget Jones, played by Renee Zellweger, I like you just as you are. Oh, that's really nice. I, yes, I like that. But that was my favorite. Do you have one? Um, oh, gee. I, uh, I don't know. I, lo- I love love, actually. And I love, um, and we kind of... Uh, straight up rip it off in our show. <laughs> I love in Love Actually when Colin Firth <laughs> again <laughs> says to says to his maid that um, driving you home is the best part of my day. I always thought was so sweet. Um, and we kind of do a sort of a, a play on that with two of our characters. Excellent. Colin Firth. Yeah. Way to go, Colin Firth. I know. Get a lot Getting of representation. <laughs> I like him in Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy. <laughs> Another when he romantic was, film. Yeah, the most romantic, romantic film of all. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> Hilarious movie. Mindy Kaling, Tracy Wigfield, thank you so much for being here. Four Thanks. Weddings and the Funeral on Hulu. Check it out.